What's up guys, Ryan back with the Journal 82 channel. This is an Aoster Motor S17. It's a 1500 watt rear hub drive e-bike. And it's my first e-bike. Uh, I've ridden some mid-drive e-bikes, never ridden a hub drive until I got this. And uh, I've been kind of up in the air on them. Not a bike bicycle expert by any means. But this is gonna be my first impressions video on the Aoster Motor. S17. So if you want a spec video, I already posted one of those. Just go back and find it. Maybe I'll put it in the description. That'll tell you all about this bike, where I bought it, how much I paid, how long it took, all that stuff. This video is kind of to tell you what I feel from the machine right off the bat. Uh, first of all, let's talk about um, quality out of the box. Uh, yeah, seems pretty good, guys. Um, there's a few little things you can notice. Uh, you can notice that the paint scheme isn't like a top of the line. Um, you know, but it, really everything else seems like it's right there with any other bicycle I've ever ridden or looked at closely. Uh, I'll tell you that. Uh, yes, it's a full suspension bike. There's not a whole lot to the shock. I think the forks are an air fork. I saw a Schrader valve on the bottom, but I'm going to get into that. Um, not a whole lot to it, but it does work. It does definitely cushion the ride. Uh, the fat tires, 26 by 3.0s, pretty cool. I've never ridden a fat tire bike before, but I really like it. I like. I, I've never tried the 4.0, but so far I love the 3.0. One other thing I gotta mention, this front fender number plate I put on yesterday. Um, this does not come on the bike. It was just raining yesterday and I was trying to keep some of the water from hitting my legs. Um, I can't decide if it looks cool or if it looks lame. It definitely takes away from some of the sleeper bicycle look to it, but um, I don't know, still up in the air on it. So uh, yeah. Uh, so let me start this first impressions video off by telling you that uh, the few mid-drives I've ridden have been pretty high-end mid-drive bikes. Husqvarna's, Specialized, Turbo Levo's, stuff like that. And what I noticed about those bikes is there was a very consistent uh, pedal assist when you're pedaling on those. But um, you had to be pedaling. You had to be putting a little force in consistently. Um, I, I don't know if this is the, the case in all these hub drive motors, but on this one, absolutely it's not the case. That's not the case at all. Uh, on this bike, as soon as you get on it um, and get that pedal, get that crank rotating like a half a rotation, this thing kicks in. And you can, you can stop pedaling and it'll keep going for a few moments or you can just keep rotating that crank and it will keep feeding power depending on, you know, depending on your pedal assist mode. I didn't really realize that was the case with a hub bike or at least with this hub bike um, at all. So I, I knew that three, two, one. When I bought this bike, I knew I didn't want like a race legal mid drive bike because one, I knew I wanted more assistance and two, I knew I wanted a thumb throttle. Um, and the reason I wanted that is because I don't plan on entering any mountain bike races. I don't even know if I'll ever do any technical mountain biking, um, but I needed something for transportation purposes uh, at motocross tracks, at, at events out in the country. I needed to be able to ride with my son on his electric bike uh, in campgrounds and on vacations and stuff like that. So I knew I wanted that throttle. And the reason I thought I wanted that throttle was because the mid drives that I've ridden were all, like I said, you had to be pedaling and putting some consistent force in. And yes, it assisted you, but you had to be putting in consistent force. That is not the case with this bike at all, guys. Like, and I'll show you that in a riding video after this. But uh, like I said, you, you pretty much uh, use the crank as your throttle. Um, because you're sitting on this bike, you're riding a bicycle, it feels natural just to pedal. Um, but you don't, you don't have to put any force into those pedals at all, guys. You just keep, you just pedal and it's like you're pedaling air. Like if the bike was off the ground, you're just pedaling and it's providing force from that hub and it's enough force until you get used to it for a while. I mean, it's kind of jolting and it's pretty exhilarating. And, uh, now I see exactly why you need the brake the brakes with the sensors in them to shut off power 
and this is pretty cool because when when you pull these in you can see the uh sensor light up here on the lcd screen and it shuts off power um and that's another thing i want to talk about really quick is uh it's really cool because i find myself you know sometimes you're turning you're turning really sharp and you're also pedaling and you don't want power to be driven when you're turning really sharp in the like in the middle of an apex of a turn because you're going to jolt and go forward and it's going to try to push your front wheel so me coming from the motorcycle world i find myself using this brake as a clutch because you see this right here this is the free play before it even starts to actuate the brake but the sensor is already actuated killing the power so you can just pull this in a little bit to where you're not dragging or actuating your brake at all and kill the power um until you get through the apex of that turn or whatever you want to do um maybe you're doing a little trick or a little jump or you, you all you got to do is barely pull in one of these the icon will come up here the power is killed and it's it's pretty cool guys um I didn't even realize that was a thing, but I really, really like it. So uh, next, let's talk about uh, 1500 watt rear hub. Is it enough power? I think for what most of these bikes are for, which is you know commuting, more or less flat landing, um, just play play bike riding. I think a thousand watts is enough. This one's 1500 and whew, let me tell you it on, on flat it will straight go i'm 220 pounds i put it in pedal assist five and uh, i've got maybe a quarter mile stretch in front of my house right here where it's flat i can get up to 35 miles an hour and so that's another thing i want to talk about speed wise when i was looking up these bikes you know you see some of them are max or are, are topped out at 20 um because that's i think the the legal limit on these bikes is 20 a lot of places um some will go 25 30 you know 35 starting to push it um i saw some do-it-yourself bikes that would do over 40 but i watched a video of a guy that said uh you know once you get up to 40 miles an hour on on a bicycle that's really dangerous and i see exactly what he meant because when i was coming down this blacktop road right here that's pretty smooth um 35 miles an hour on this was sketchy I felt really comfortable at about 20, you know, 26, 27 cruising on this hard road. And then on a gravel road, I was testing it on about 22 miles an hour. Felt like the sweet spot. The suspension was able to soak up all the bumps there, um, but you still really feel like you're moving. And let's not forget, the entire point of bicycling is to kind of slow down a little bit, look around, enjoy your surroundings. Maybe talk to the person next to you. If I want to get out in Blitzkrieg back roads and, and trails, I've got motorcycles for that. Um, that's not what this is for. All right, so first let's talk about, sorry, three, two, one. All right, so next let's talk about um, the battery situation here. I showed in another video how to take it out, but I'm kind of skeptical. I heard stories about these things can be tough to get in and out. Um, kind of a pain in the butt this and that uh, this doesn't appear to be the case. There's off you push in Pull on the top and there it is um, It's I mean you could definitely feel the weight of it, but it's not so heavy that um, You wouldn't want to carry it around I'm not sure that you couldn't grab an extra one of these and uh, maybe keep it in your car Something like that if you wanted to extend your day um, and Would I wear one of these on my back? <sighs> probably not guys if you were to put one of these in a backpack um that would probably be all you would want to all you would want to carry in that backpack um which would make the probably the whole the whole day kind of pointless um maybe you could rig up a way to put a rack on the back here or port something here to store another one but then you're going to get into the bike being you know a good bit heavier and probably just not something worth worth doing Okay guys, so let's just kind of sum everything up. Um, it's an affordable level um, e-bike, guys. I, I knew I wasn't paying 12 grand for an e-bike. I kind of knew what I was getting, and it's kind of what I wanted. Uh, I wanted something to get a taste of the e-bike world and still have enough power to have a little fun, but I'm, I really want to see if I'm going to have enough time to ride it, if it's going to be the right fit for me, and uh, I think everything is plenty good enough quality on it to tell me that. Um, 
the brakes, the wheels and tires, the suspension, um, all that feels fine. I, you know, I've got 10 miles on it or whatever's all I've got on it so far, but you know, the chains never jumped off the chain, the cassette, everything feels like it's pretty well made. Um, so do I see any really, uh, quick weak points off the bat on this? Well, if I had to say there's one thing that concerns me, it's the kickstand. So this kickstand obviously is mounted way back by the rear axle and, uh, it looks cool. It's it's very thick and meaty and bulky, but let me show you what it looks like uh, raised up. Look at that, guys. See how low that sits to the ground? Um, I was going 30 uh, on the road yesterday, and I hit a bump where a bridge comes together with the road, and that actually fell down and was actually dragging. You can see where it was dragging the ground. Um, as much as I love a kickstand, I mean, I really do love a kickstand. I want to put them on most of my dirt bikes, but uh, I think I'm going to take that off because it scares me. Um, I'm just afraid that it would just take one rut or one rock to hit that and send me flying, probably. Um, and the fact that it fell down once on its own is even more scary. So what I'm probably going to do is just take those bolts out and take this off and then zip tie this power cable up here a little more out of the way because I really don't like I really don't like it hanging down like that either um yeah that's that's about it for first impressions guys uh, like I said I've got tons of videos coming we're gonna do range tests we're gonna do technical tests um I'm gonna show you you know how much range you get in each pedal assist mode I'm going to do a top speed test with the throttle and a top speed test with level five pedal assist. Uh, so yeah, there's a, a lot of stuff to come on this bike. So if you're inter interested in one of these, you might want to stick around. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.